Greetings once again, mages out there. Dudes, this been back again with another chapter of Fairy Tale. Hundred Years Quest, where previously, Igneous group has unleashed a powerful spell that has turned the dragon god savage and has produced giant lacrima that are causing dragonization in the various citizens all across this country. Natsu and his team have split off in order to destroy these lacrima specifically, which should hopefully end the dragonization of the populace and stop the control of the dragon god. Lucy has returned to the town of Ermina and after dodging the dragonized populace has come upon the assistant of the water dragon god of Merkphobia, Carmel. They end up in an underwater battle and Lucy finds herself at a difficult position, not wanting to harm Carmel, but also not wanting to be harmed herself. But who should come to her aid? None other than Brandon, apparently still in the area, looking for the key of Aquarius. Meanwhile, Natsu and Happy have returned to the Fire God's castle in order to take on Ignea, only to find a dragonized Brian, who is now much tougher than he was the last time Natsu fought him. Meanwhile, Ignea has decided to pursue Ferris, seeing her as the biggest challenge right now. While Ferris sends off her Eurasian says in order to do her dark bidding. The three factions are now fully on the move. Who will come out on top? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, Fairy Tale Hundred Years Quest, Chapter 167. A friend waiting on savage thieves. And I gotta admit, I am digging this style. Lucy and Brandish in gothic Lolita fashion. It is a very good look on both of them. Atsuo's abilities really have improved with time. Alright, let's jump into the chapter proper. As Brandish, who is usually clad in a bikini, has just kicked away Carmel, joining in to the submerged battle. Lucy calls out Brandish's name in shock, while Brandish in a rebreather mask readies herself as Carmel glares angrily. Hmm, I'm not really sure what's going on here. It seems like Carmel tries to go in for a strike. Was Brandish gigantic? Huh, because the perspective on Carmel attacking Brandish seems off otherwise. He must have been larger than I thought she was in the previous chapter. Brandish then shrinks down and uses Gaban T, enlarging a whole defensive row of coral, blocking Caramel's attack. Lucy shocked questions, you blocked it by enlarging the coral? Without missing a beat though, Brandish races in on Caramel, <laughs> and pulling a page out of one piece enlarges her fist, knocking Caramel up and out of the water. Brandish then changes her hand back, and Lucy smiles, saying, Th thanks. Brandish simply gives a nod. She then recalls, when our bodies got switched, was that your fault? <laughs> Lucy says, no, that was an opponent's magic. Brandish simply says, well, I guess it's cool. I had fun. Yeah, you certainly did have fun in Lucy's body. Lucy then questions, so, why are you here? Brandish questions, don't you sense it? Lucy is at first puzzled, but then a shudder runs through her. She turns her attention downward into the murky depths in a chasm, seeing something large and ominous rumbling down below. She calls out, the giant lacrima, the one that's turning the townspeople into dragons? Hmm, but Lucy looks again, spotting something inside the lacrima. What? How? Why? Much to Lucy's shock, inside the lacrima is Aquarius's key. Why would it end up there? Was it always in the water under Armina? That's so strange. Brandish simply says, I followed its magic. Lucy questions, what's it doing here? And Brandish simply says, no idea. <laughs> are, are we just gonna yada yada the fact that it's down there? Huh. Lucy immediately wells up with tears and cries out Aquarius's name, doing so again as she races towards the lacrima, with Brandish following. Oh, but Brandish gets in between Lucy's way blocking her path, saying sorry. This is the one thing I can't let you have, much to Lucy's shock. 
A determined Aquarius says, Aquarius belongs to my mother. She's not yours. Panicked, Lucy tries to explain she's not a possession. And though Brandish looks unflinching in a resolve, Lucy, tearful, says, Aquarius is my friend. But suddenly, there's a rumble in the water as something massive moves past the lacrima. And thus, circling the lacrima is Merkphobia in his full dragon form and looking very intimidating. I don't know, he wasn't easy to bring down last time. Which, it's funny, just watch that in the anime too. How are you gonna deal with this, Lucy? Brandish questions, what's that? Lucy explains, the water dragon god, Merkphobia. Brandish questions, a dragon? He turns to Lucy asking, Where's that pink-haired dragon slayer who is always with you? And the fluffy cat. <laughs> you just want to play with the cat, don't you? Lucy explains they've got their own mission. Brandish emphasizes, Even my magic won't work on a dragon. But suddenly, Merkphobia turns his attention to the two girls. Lucy calls out, He should calm down if we destroy the giant lacrima. Brandish says, That'll be a hassle, but it's doable. Lucy summons power to her hand and tells Brandish, I'll draw Merkphobia's attention. Please, destroy the giant lacrima, Brandish. He fires off an attack as Brandish swims away, saying, I might just make off with, the Aqua with Aquarius's key once I destroy the lacrima. But Lucy smiles, saying, that's not the sort of person you are. Much to Brandish's shock at the statement, while Lucy fires off her attack, Merkphobia just kinda, just kinda swims right through it, let's be honest. Lucy calls out to Merkphobia, remembering all his words from previously, his lamentations, his regrets, his joyful demeanor, as she says, you chose to coexist with humans. Your noble intent has been thwarted by Ignea. Merkphobia draws closer and closer, making his way through Lucy's attack, as he manages to fling Lucy out of the water to her shock. Ooh. And in an instant, it looks as though Merkphobia is about to consume Lucy. Oh, oh. For a second, I'm just like, wait, Natsu showed up? It's like, no, no, Natsu's clashing with Brian as he delivers a fiery punch to Brian's face, slamming him into the ground. Oh, Brian continues to smile as though nothing even happened. An angry Natsu questions, where's Ignea? Brian, smiling, says, the age of dragons is beginning. Oh, we cut back to Lucy as Merkphobia's jaws close in around her as he chomps down. Brian saying, humans can't be dragon. Again, I'll keep repeating it. This shouldn't be an easy fight. We're in the final stretch. The dragon gods are at their most powerful. I do appreciate Lucy trying to appeal to Merkphobia's sense of reasoning because he's one of the dragons with the greatest sense of empathy. There was an actual bit of a connection with them, not as much as Selene, but there is a connection to Merkphobia. So there is the potential for Lucy to maybe get through to him. Whether or not she will, that's another story. But there's also the question, will actually destroying the Lacrima undo the control over him? Because I could see it being that it just undoes the dragonization and that's it. But we'll have to wait and see. Do I feel that Lucy should actually beat him? Honestly, no. We keep establishing that it takes a lot more to defeat a dragon, especially a dragon god. From the likes of Acnologia till now, it's never been a solo affair. And even when it was, it was take all these other people's magic put it in someone else. That boost is needed in order to really do some damage. And Lucy by herself, hmm, and even with Brandish assisting, I feel that ultimately Brandish will do the right thing and potentially hand over the key, but Brandish's personality isn't allowing her to just simply hand it over. She likes teasing Lucy a little too much. And I feel it's more that she's questioning if Lucy will back down if Brandish brings up her mother. But it is a question, how does Lucy get out of this situation? If it is simply destroying the lacrima and that undoes the spell, that will be kind of disappointing. But it at least be, it would at least be a little bit more reasonable 
as to how they manage to defeat them especially if the members of fairy tale don't get any other backup in terms of this fight that would definitely be the situation because with the fight initial fight with merc phobia it's been seen that it takes a lot to really actually kill these guys so enough of a beating could also take them down but i don't know it's hard to say how i really want this all to go down there's so many different ways not to mention there's still the demons from the book of ferris when will they arrive on the scene how will they disrupt the proceedings and goings on i'm still holding out for it a full three-way battle because though Brandish is taking the role of Lucy's rival as it were, he still is ultimately on Lucy's side. With everything they went through during the Alvarez Empire arc, I don't see this going any real other way except Brandish ultimately being Lucy's ally. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this chapter? The initial battle between Lucy and Brandish taking on Carmel and then Merxobia, and how you think they'll be able to overcome these dragon gods. I want to hear from you, so like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I've been Deez Diz Din, and I hope to see you later. Till then, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>